Hello, everybody. It is 12.55 p.m., just a little bit after noon here in the east. Uh, woke up this morning. It was low 40s, uh, low 40s degrees temperature uh, Fahrenheit. It's climbing up now. Billy, what was it where uh, when you woke up uh, this morning in Georgia? It was in the upper 60s today, this morning. Yeah. So, not too bad. You know we both have some heat coming, right? Yeah, yeah. It's still a little below average, in my opinion. We're still oh, well, at 80, 90 degree temperature. So. Absolutely. Well, you know, um, we, uh, we're definitely usually uh, a little higher than the 40s here in uh, Columbus, Ohio, this time of year. But that notwithstanding, um, and notwithstanding our long-term discourse for a coming mini ice age uh, in the next uh, 20, 40, 60 years, um, the real story, at least short-term-wise when it comes to the weather, is climate extremes, back and forth of all types. And we're about to get, uh, some parts of the country are already getting, uh, a heat element. And this is due, uh, and let me pull up my screen share here, share my desktop. <clears throat> this is due to a low-pressure system centered in the United States. Now, this is the U.S. wind map. We focus on this a good bit. Uh, you see this low right here sucking in counterclockwise. They all, uh, all lows do that in the northern hemisphere. Anyway, what this is doing right now is this is drawing a lot of heat and moisture up the leading east edge. Uh, there were parts of Texas uh, and some other areas that actually uh, setting some heat records yesterday uh, as everyone to the north of this low is still below average temperature. But the issue with climate extremes is that this does appear to indeed be an energetic shift. And without getting too much into it, uh, directly below this video that you're watching, um, you should see links. Uh, one of the links will be to our talk on what exactly is happening climate-wise, and that isn't just confined to the Earth. Uh, to make a long story short, and if you want more information, you can click that link. The Sun, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and, and uh, arguably Uranus are all changing more than Earth, and it's meteorological changes uh, almost across the board. And so we begin to look for... Um, you know, what could be causing such a shift throughout the entire solar system? You basically come down to the energetic uh, side of things. And given our Earth spots hypothesis, our electrical take on weather, the sky, things like that, it's natural to think that the low pressure systems would be lower and the high pressure systems would be higher. And that's where we come back here again to the U.S. wind map. The low pressure systems are lower than they were before, so they pull harder on the leading east edge, bringing more heat. They pull harder on the backside, bringing more cool. And it creates where they converge a, a greater difference, uh, more potential. There's a larger difference in temperature, moisture content, pressure even. And that's how we're getting these more severe extreme events and where it seems like we swing really really hot to really really cold if you live anywhere in this circle I mean I'm talking like up to here anywhere in here you have surely noticed that it'll be really hot and then the storms will roll through and beyond just having you know the storms come through it gets much colder than you would expect well, that's because the drive on these air masses is so much stronger. Now, despite the fact that we have a pretty well-defined low right here, we do see heat coming up, and we do have a major fire danger as some of the uh, most significant drought areas in the country uh, are you know, in here, and they're going to have some high winds and some more heat today, favoring uh, fire conditions, unfortunately. But as this week goes on, and here we are, and this is, uh, we're using WOW uh, right now, World of Weather. And the blue signifies low pressure. The red signifies higher pressure. And I'm just going to start going through here. And you can see 
pinches off a little bit, comes together, morphs around. But at this point, we're on, we're at Wednesday into Thursday now, and that low is just to the weekend here. Does it finally break across the country and fall apart? What you're going to see when that happens is there's been so much heat drawn up this way that the energy there is going to be ripe. And when it has sat there for a while, gained strength, and right as it's ready to break east across the country after having basically sat still in the breadbasket for today and most of tomorrow as well, we're going to start to see a severe weather threat return to the United States. Uh, as of right now, most of the models are preliminary. Uh, all of this is probably going to change going forward, but starting Wednesday, we're looking at severe weather threats, and they could be in Texas. You could actually see them just uh, east of the Rockies and even up into Michigan and some of the surrounding areas. But as Thursday, Friday, and the weekend come on, what you're going to see is these lows, and I'll come back here, actually. And as I said, again, these are models at this point. Happen as the... Drive is going to be really strong here, and it's going to be strong enough that this heat and moisture is going to mix with cooler, drier air, and we're going to have some significant severe weather up the, uh, the leading east convergence of the storm. And that's pretty much going to continue for uh, a good bit of Thursday and Friday and Saturday as it moves in. Now, um, whether or not we're going to get a lot of that severe weather uh, down like in your area, Billy, not sure. The convergence is definitely going to swing up and take on uh, New England by the time the weekend gets here. But, you know, at that point, the low finally decides that it's going to break up. Uh, at least the models say so for now. And that's where we stand. So, moral of the story is that upcoming week, uh, today shouldn't be too bad other than the, the fire danger. The fire danger is going to remain, and that's always going to happen when you have the heat. Uh, you've had the persistent drought for quite some time. I believe I heard this morning that said that over the over a recent time period, maybe it's weeks or months, uh, some areas right in here, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. You can click on the wind map to, uh, to zoom in, by the way, and if you ever want to zoom back out, you just hit unzoom over here on the left side. But anyway, there are some areas that are actually right on the low uh, that are actually over the last few weeks and months, it's the first, second, or third driest time on record. And so you add in the strong winds and the heat, and you have a severe fire danger. That's today and tomorrow, and depending on what happens today and tomorrow, perhaps into the latter portions of the week as well. I'm going to zoom back out. And then as Wednesday comes, we're really going to have the severe weather threat. Wednesday, it's probably going to be kind of all over the place. Thursday, it becomes more of you know, a defined thing along the leading east convergence, and then, of course, it's going to shift up through uh, New England as the time goes on. But anyway, let me quickly just pull this up here. I won't... Uh, this is that link I was telling you about if you want to know more about some of the things that are happening all over the Earth and uh, in the solar system. We'll get something on here that's not too terribly distracting. And um, essentially, the question is, with these climate extremes, what's going to uh, happen? What are we going to see? It's the most common question um, because you can't really do uh, more than five minutes of research on the topic of climate or the weather uh, without hearing, of course, the, the main line, uh, the main line uh, green agenda, what we consider to be mostly propaganda. Um, not that we enjoy pollution, but uh, it just doesn't have as much of an effect on the climate as the sun does. In terms of shorter term or mid-range climate extremes, what can we expect? Now, I'll just pull the wind map up because look at. Over the next few weeks, as it really starts to heat up in this part of the world, the tropical storm season is going to start to come back, and it's looking like the area, well, you can't see Mexico and Baja right here, but from Baja and down into Mexico, this area is going to favor tropical storm development uh, pretty heavily over the next few weeks, I'd say, the next four or five weeks or so. Then this 
sort of climate extremes mix where we get this really, really hot and really, really cold on the backside, that's pretty much going to continue throughout the summer. We're going to have these extreme heat events sometimes, and then you're going to wonder if it's still summer other times. It's just what we're going to have to get used to is the new normal as the high pressure becomes higher and the low pressure becomes lower. Now, if you've been watching, and I'll go ahead and I'll pull up some of the climate records here. Our old friend. Uh, this is something we've been looking at a lot recently to show some of the climate records, uh, the climate extremes in particular. And while this is loading, I'll take the time to remind everyone that, you know, put a gun to my head, force me to choose. Is it going to be hot or is it going to be cold in the future? Which is more likely? Hands down, long term, it's cold. However, if I'm free to choose what I think are short and midterm, you know, the next couple of years, maybe decade or two will be, it's going to be a story of these climate extremes back and forth. Now, for a good part of the world, 2011 and 2012 were very, very warm. Of course, there were parts of Europe that were just getting over some of the worst winters they had ever seen, but that notwithstanding. At this point, cold has roared back and taken the lead over the last full 365 days, extending back into 2013. Just a year to date, cold has been absolutely dominating in 2014, and it's not just in the United States. The global summary show the same as well. Uh, over the last year, extending back into 2013, the heat records are still you know, pretty much on top. However, if you look at just 2014, it's absolute dominance by the cold. This swing back and forth is what we're going to be expecting, and we should probably be expecting a shift back to the heat in the not too distant future. Um, and I don't just mean these couple day events like we saw here with almost getting record temperatures or like some of the heat warnings that were coming up the coastline when there was a low drawing air literally from the tip of Baja up to Southern California and there was a two day heat warning. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, weeks, months of above average temperature and we have been below average now for quite a while. I don't know if it'll happen by, but by the fall, um, and let me go ahead and pull this up. Should have thought to pull this up already. You'll have to excuse me on that. I believe it was April 23rd. Yeah. April 23rd, we had a video called El Nino in 2014. Will we have one? Um, Pretty much everything that we track and everything that everybody else tracks says that conditions will favor an El Nino, and we talk about that in this video. The conditions will start to favor it in the fall. I don't know it, how quick of an uptick it will be to whether or not the heat will come in by then, but by the winter time, uh, in addition to, of course, you know, when a low comes through, we'll get warm and then get really, really cold. We'll probably have some more of those severe cold events as well in the short term this winter, but... Over the long term, this winter should probably be a bit warmer for a good portion of the world than it otherwise would have been. The lone exception of that, of course, might be uh, Europe. And again, we're focused on the United States today. Last little bit, uh, and I get this question so very often. Um, how long do you think that it's going to be this back and forth, climate extremes, before there is an actual break for global cooling? Uh, only if there is to be one. And frankly, I think it could be as long as until 2020. That seems like a pretty uh, solid number, and it's not even, uh, you know, a number that I, I'm holding on to myself. A lot of uh, people who are focused on, you know, say the Wolf Glassberg cycles of the sun, uh, who are focused on uh, shorter uh, sinusoidal periodicities in the temperature. Uh, this area of 2018 to 2025 appears to be when a lot of those scientists believe that we could break uh, for global cooling. But until then, I don't see any way to avoid these more climate extremes as this energetic shift continues. Again, uh, Link, uh, with my speech, that's got everything you need. Uh, you can follow the titles of all of the articles shown. All of this data comes from the official sources, uh, you know, NASA, the ESA, 
uh, and equivalent sources, you know, PhDs, university professors doing the research. It is what it is. The Sun, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and arguably Uranus are all changing in a climate form more than Earth, proving that either climate change is a natural and expected planetary process or that what we're seeing here on Earth is part of a larger systemic solar system shift. And I guess uh, the last thing I'll say uh, on top of that 2020 note is by then we had better get our pollution and all the other ways we poison the environment under control. If you do watch that speech, I will uh, ask you to start paying attention right off the bat because before I even make my first factual pitch for solar climate forcing, I like to uh, like to say that I expressed my opinion quite well about human pollution and things like that. Anyway, that's where we stand. Uh, we have severe weather coming to the United States this week. Uh, the cold that we've seen over 2014 should give way by the winter time in the north. Of course, that'll be the southern hemisphere summer. And for that question that I seem to get dozens of times every day, how long is it going to be this climate extremes, this really, really hot, then really, really cold? You know, unseasonably so. How long is that going to be? Best guess right now is 2020. And then hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll have your gloves and your hat situation figured out. But until then, we have, uh, we have severe weather threat to take care of uh, and get through later this week. Uh, it'll be what it is. Billy, do you have anything to add there? No, you did a pretty good job, everybody. <laughs> Much appreciated, and thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, make sure you're safe and check your local do come through this week. Be safe, yeah, everyone. Everybody.